or something happens to your kitchen and you say, This is ludicrous. You get having trouble, don't panic. Okay, so I hope everyone enjoyed my little trivia questions. Uh, what What's wrong, Jack? <laughs> Why is it ludicrous? That's what the little sound bite was. Oh, as you turned off the music, <laughs> oh. it was ludicrous. Like, okay. This is ludicrous. I was like, what? <laughs> I thought my questions were cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I try to always get the, the at least the two hour, three hour kind, hoping that I won't get an ad in between that. Um, but my apologies, y'all. So, okay. So um, I am excited for tonight's meeting. Um, we have 38 people in this meeting right now. And so um, our numbers are looking great today. Um, so just to, to do a quick little review, um, Today we do have a guest speaker, um, Ms. Jolene Martin from, um, that is a NASA veteran. Um, she will hear a little bit about her um, following my few slides regarding our um, science fair. Okay, so let's get on with our meeting. Ooh. All right, so today is December 5th, 2023. Um, if you're new to Virtual Science Club, if you would love to just make a note on the chat of like where you're from. Um, I know we had an EMS call, we had a communication email um, sent to majority of high schools, high schoolers in the country. Um, hi, from Texas. Oh, Michigan. Okay. Um, so just let us know where you're from and um, and then we can get more into, um, wow, New York, California, Michigan, Texas, Jersey, MA, Ohio. Oh, great, great, great. So um, although our science fair does cater to specifically um, our Tennessean students in the 23 counties, which we'll discuss, um, the Virtual Science Club is for everybody. And so um, we hope that this club can be um, a monthly meeting for you guys. Even if you're not from Tennessee, we do have mentors that um, you will see if you come to the next meeting. Um, next month and they discuss mostly research ideas and questions and um, how to do projects with our um, students who like to go into the science fair however um, we love just talking with students who are interested in stem um, middle school and high school as well all right so again a little bit about what the virtual science club is uh, so we meet um, at seven o'clock um, eastern time and we have one to two meetings per month with our with our um, mentors as well as our guest speakers. Um, so grades six to twelve are welcome. If you have teachers and um, other leaders in the community that are interested in volunteering or just learning about our programs, um, please let them come. It is you know it's free to attend. And um, the QR code on the other side is for our next meeting, which is going to be um, on after the holidays on January 9th at 7 p.m. So typically in November, December, we only have one meeting simply because um, it is holiday season and we don't wanna pick anyone's schedules for traveling and, and seeing family and friends. So um, we start in September and then, so we have September, October, and then November, December are um, the one meeting, October and September are two meetings. And then we pick up, um, it's back to two, 
uh, meetings a month, but it was just typically the first and third week of the month um, to prepare students um, for our science fair later on in the end of March. But again, because I know a lot of you guys are out of state, it's always great to space for you guys to come here um, and learn about um, what we are offering here in Tennessee. And then also we do have industry leaders and um, community partners from all types of STEM fields. So uh, feel free to pick their brain and um, have this safe space to talk about science and whatever else. All right, so our, um, SACEF is our Southern Appalachian um, Science and Engineering Fair. Um, so we have our registration open right now. Um, and then, so we do again cater to the 23 counties, which I will just show you a, a quick clip in a second. Um, but for those who are interested in, in applying, um, the pre approval deadline is January 18th. Project registration is due on the 27th of February. We actually have our event on the 26th of March and then awards ceremony about a week after. Um, so if you are interested in, in our local area, um, the two QR codes have just more information about our science fair. And then, so these are the 23 counties that our specific science fair caters to. So if you're in um, any of the shaded locations, um, and are looking to complete a project, um, this is a great space to uh, pick the brains of our mentors and, and see if you're on track or if there's not even a project you want to do. Um, again, our mentors and our, um, our board is just open to talk about whatever you like, even if it's just kind of like advice on um, what to take for, you know, said career. Um, so this is, you know, a welcoming space for, for everybody. Um, and that's why we chose a virtual um, portion instead of like meeting, you know, in space so that we can have it more um, available to anybody. All right, so before we get into anything else, I just wanted to do a quick introduction of who our um, special guest is. So Ms. Jolene Martin is a NASA veteran um, and I had notes on her, okay. I, I can take it away. There she is. There he is. <laughs> okay. I was trying to find where you were in my little camera. Anyways, um, so I'm going to continue on with the presentation on my part, but um, Ms. Jolene will just talk on uh, talk on the side. So without further ado, Ms. Jolene, go ahead. Okay. Um, like she said, I'm Jolene Martin, and I'm all about propulsion. Um, that's what my specialty was. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself that led up to me doing propulsion. It's, um, I am a structural engineer by degree, but I have over 30 years of experience in propulsion. And what happened was um, when I graduated, I don't know, does anybody know who what the core of engineers is? And feel free to just either unmute or say something in the chat. And if you don't, that's okay. So the, the Corps of Engineers is a government agency that does huge projects like dams and, and uh, highways and stuff that uh, for the federal government. And I thought, oh, it would be so cool if I could be in the Corps of Engineers. So I um, found out that I, I, I grew up in Ohio and found out that in Huntsville, Alabama, they had a Corps of Engineers. Well, I'd never been to Huntsville, but my mom had a friend in Huntsville. So I just up and went to Huntsville and showed up at the Corps of Engineers and had a resume, but uh, they weren't interested at all. And um, they said uh, they couldn't hire anybody and they didn't care how good I was or what I did or anything that they didn't, they weren't interested in um, hiring a structural engineer at the time. And so um, I didn't didn't know what to do because that had always been my dream. So I got a job in a health food store. Now, mind you, I have an engineering degree and I get a job in a health food store. And, um, and I'm in this health food store trying to figure out what I want to do next. And someone walks in with a NASA badge. Uh, I'm assuming people know what NASA is. It's another government agency and it's all about space and getting to space. And um, I could even tell you their, their vision, 
which I am going to, but um, anyway, uh, just kind of, does do folks know what NASA is? Just a simple yes would be great. Of course. Yes. <laughs> yes, I um, see everyone saying yes. Wonderful. Okay, so someone walks in with a NASA badge in um, Huntsville, uh, and I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. I had not heard of Von Braun, um, hadn't heard of the German team that came to Huntsville, Alabama, and now they were all about rockets and everything. And I started learning about all this, and they said, um, NASA's hiring, and I th think they need a structural engineer. And I thought, what do they need a structural engineer for? So anyway, I went, and sure enough, um, they said they needed a structural engineer for the uh, support structure for the Hubble Space Telescope. And I thought, oh, wow, this is going to be cool. But right after I started, the first accident um, of Challenger happened. And what was kind of interesting because they hadn't hired in so long that um, they didn't really have anybody to uh, anybody new to work on some of the stuff um, in Challenger. So I immediately was asked to be a propulsion engineer. And if we go to the slide that you had up right now, so tell me who knows what that is. That. So, <laughs> they say space shuttle. <laughs> Very good. That's the space shuttle. Um, it, officially, it is called the space transportation system. The entire um, vehicle is called the space transportation system. And uh, anybody know what the little white things on the side are? SRBs, I'm really impressed. SRBs, that's right, solid rocket boosters. How about the engines on the back of the orbiter? Anybody know those? How about the orange thing? My daughter always laughs at me when I said, who knows what the orange, the orange tank there is? I, I guess I just gave it away, external tank. So if we go to the next, um, the next chart. So there are parts, and this is an old vehicle. I'm gonna start off with an old vehicle. And um, the, the thing that I always like to tell, ask people is, um, how, or let people know is how important communication is. Because even though we have all those different parts and people working on all those different parts, let's say one of the boosters is uh, runs hotter, if that makes sense, goes faster than another booster. You, you guys knew what the SRBs are. They're the, they're the, one, the white boosters there. Um, what would happen if, if they're not communicating and one would run faster than another? And I'm gonna hold this up. And I'm going to give you all a clue. Can you all see this? Yes. Okay. So if one booster is going faster than another, what do you think happens? Make sense? So I always uh, put a plug in for communication and how important it is and teamwork and everything um, whenever you're working on, uh, on any of your future projects. But... Um, so let me let me talk a little bit about the about the different parts. Okay, so um, uh, let me start with the uh, SRBs, and if we go to the next chart, this is an SSME firing. It's also called an RS twenty five. Um, that's the name of the engine, and it is being fed by that large orange tank. Does anybody know what kind of fuel and oxidizer? Um, and that's what you need. You need a fuel to burn, but you also need an oxidizer. Anybody know what the 
uh, engine, that type of engine, what type of fuel and what type of oxidizer is used. Well, it's liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. And how do you think you get liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen? You have to make it extremely cold. So a liquid hydrogen has to go down to around a negative um, 400 degrees and a liquid oxygen has to go down to, well, it's a negative 423 and a liquid oxygen has to go down to 297, I believe it is, almost 300, negative 300. And that is um, how uh, a liquid engine compared to a solid booster. Um, and the engines, the engines, the RS-25s, in, the, in this case, and in the new vehicle, I'm going to talk a little bit about Artemis. I don't know if you all have heard about the new vehicle that we're, that we're flying that's going to take us to the moon and to Mars. But the um, um, new vehicle is uses the same things, solid rocket boosters, which you mentioned before, and um, liquid engines. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the boosters. And again, I'm all about the rockets. I'm all about propulsion. I've had years of experience with propulsion. So go to the next chart, if you don't mind. Now, this is a busy chart, but I want to talk to you about what a booster consists of. So I'm going to tell you, if you were making a booster, how you would do it, you would need a steel case, and I kind of... Um, say, think of it like a, uh, a pan, um, a cake pan, and you're going to mix up propellant and oxidizer. In this case, um, you have uh, aluminum that is a part of the propellant. That's your fuel. You have your fuel and your oxidizer. And anyway, it's you you put um, the propellant into a huge vat and you mix it up, kind of like you do a cake mix. And you mix up this propellant and then you pour it into a um into your steel case. And you have a center part, which is kind of like um, um uh, if you have a butt pan, it's got a hole in the middle. And that's going to be the part that uh, that lights that you're going to burn. And then you stack these boosters. Of course, it, it, it's uh, um, much bigger than my hand stacking here. But you stack these boosters and it's about when you're done, you're uh, at 150 feet. And for the shuttle's case, um, the tank is about 200 and the boosters are about 150 feet. Um, and if you look at the picture that I show you there, you can see what see where it says external tank, um, ring, attach ring, aft attach ring, those will attach to your tank and then everything sits on the very bottom skirt there, that aft skirt. Is there any questions relative towards anything that I've gone through so far. The main point I want you to get is there's liquid and then there's solids. And oh, and, and a solid is like um, the consistency of a pencil eraser. Uh, it's not solid, solid. It's, it's If you think of a pencil eraser, it's kind of like that. So if you go um, back to the previous chart on on chart number three, Go back to three, one more. Oh, well, there you go. So if you look at this chart, you can see the two solid rocket boosters. Now you know what type of propellant is in those and you see the external tank. Again, that's like your big gas tank. And at the top is you're gonna have a tank there for liquid oxygen. At the, at the bottom is liquid hydrogen. And they're gonna be feeding 
those engines at the bottom, those space shuttle main engines. Um, and then you also need a, um, a place for astronauts to live. And I saw somebody was on there from Texas and typically that is the design center for making a crew vehicle because you have your launch vehicle, which is all about the propulsion, all about uh, controlled explosions. And we usually don't like to use the word explosions, but controlled um, to get that vehicle off the ground. But you need, and that's usually at Johnson Space Center, um, a design that the astronauts can live and breathe in. And that, in this case, it's the orbiter. It's the vehicle um, that's on the front there. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, well, let's go to chart uh, that says NASA's, I, I think it's chart six. Yes, that's it. Okay, so the vehicle that and uh, that we are working on now, we've launched it once, and it is a huge, huge vehicle, is called uh, SLS. Our previous vehicle was Space Transportation System. This is the Space Launch System. And again, you got to think about crew vehicle and you got to think about launch vehicle. So your crew vehicle, which again is at Johnson and um, they're doing the design and coming up with how the astronauts are going to live um, and what, what they need to live and survive and compared to a launch vehicle. And the launch vehicle, in this case, you have, again, the solid rocket boosters. And if we go to the next page, that breaks it out a little bit better. So again, you see the little white ones? Yeah, they're they're <laughs> definitely not to scale. They're very large. Um, the white on the side are your launch, uh, I mean, are your solid rocket boosters. They've added another segment to get it, give it more thrust. And by the way, that's why um, people are, are scared of uh, solid rocket boosters is because the oxidizer is poured into that cake mix. And if the oxidizer is there and you got your fuel, once you light them, they're going. You're not gonna be able to put them out. And then in the middle, you have a big tank and this is an even bigger tank because we're trying to go uh, uh, trying to go even further um, into uh, outer space and the RS-25s are the same engines we used on the space shuttle. Now this vehicle, the launch vehicle, remember launch versus crew, the launch vehicle is called Artemis and the crew vehicle is called Orion. So Artemis is what I worked on. I, I, again, I was all about doing the rockets. And um, if we go to the next chart, um, so, okay, I'm sorry, the question came up. I didn't catch it. Something about material. Yes. What material do they use to build the structure of the booster? Okay. The booster, inside the booster, the propellant, I don't know how much detail to go into here. <laughs> so, um, again, think of a steel case, actually steel, a steel case on the, and it's a circle. And it's a 12 foot diameter circle. And the segment is about 30 feet. And inside that steel case is internal insulation. It's EPDM is the acronym, ethyl propamine diamine monomer, and an NPR. Anyway, it's, it's internal insulation. And then inside the insulation um, is propellant. And the fuel of the propellant 
is aluminum and with an oxidizer. Um, and if you think back, I don't know if y'all have ever studied about um, Challenger, the, the, the one that blew up back in, I think it was 87. Um, the, uh, the way that those segments are stacked, you know, it's kind of like you're, you're stacking them, a clevis and tang, the way they're stacked created a joint and it was so cold that your O-ring and stuff didn't track and that joint opened up and then it, um, impinged upon the tank, which, um, which caused the tank to explode, which was a very bad day. Okay, that did that answer your question? Probably more than you wanted to know even, right? Okay, thank you. So this picture, and now that you've heard my little talk, um, do you know what the big orange thing is? Anybody? How about a tank? Fuel tank, right, yay. Um, so that's a fuel tank. In this case, it goes to the launch vehicle, Artemis. Um, and you see how big that is. I don't know if you can tell how big that is, but it's a, it's a very, very large tank. That is at Stennis Space Center. Um, do y'all know where Sp Stennis Space Center is in Mississippi? Mississippi and uh, we we have a facility in New Orleans. It's very cool. Uh, if you, I know they have a uh, visitor center down there. I haven't actually been to it, but it's a very co uh, cool area to visit. But um, so this is, the tank is being tested. It was uh, one of the hardest things that we had to build. Um, a lot of the technology is new for this tank. And so I got a question for y'all and you can take a guess. How do you think, this, this is in Mississippi, New Orleans. How do we get that to the launch site, which is in Florida in KSC at Cape Canaveral? How do you think we get that huge tank that's 300 and some feet long, almost as big as a football field? How do we get that to? I like the answers, but none of them are right so far. Up, oh, up. Oh, there's the there's the right one. Ship. Right. Barge. See that white thing in front? That's a barge. That's how we get it there. Okay, back on the boosters. How do you think we get those booster segments from Utah to um, KSC? Because they're in Utah, we pour, we make that cake mix and, and pour it into those segments and we send and we get them, then we have to get them all the way down to KSC. Somebody gave the right answer for this one. Anybody gonna take a guess? Nope, not the plane. Train, there we go. That's it. It's a train. We do them up, put them on railroad cars. And, you know, we usually have a couple people um, watching and everything because guess what people try and do when they see those railroad cars going across the country? No, nope, don't try and steal them. Well, not that I know of. So you got you got solid propellant in there. What do you think people are going to try and do? One more guess. Blow it up. Yep, they're going to try and shoot it. Going to see if they can set it off. Can you believe it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so we got. Um, okay, the engines. I bet you. I bet you all can guess the engines. Um, if we go back, those those RS-25s, and uh, we test those and everything. And how do you think we get those from, sometimes it's California. We do some building and testing and everything in California and in Mississippi. How do we get those to the launch site? Truck? 
we truck them. Semi, yep, that's right. Um, but somebody kept saying plane. We used to fly the orbiter on a plane. So we had plane, train, ship, truck. We did all kinds of things to get all the different parts to the launch site. Um, now, if we go back one chart, does anybody remember what the vehicle is called, the launch vehicle is called on this chart here? Artemis. And does, and this one's, why do you have to use so many different, I, I didn't catch that. Why do you use so many different methods to transport it? Um, because each, each part is unique and the size usually dictates a lot of it. Um, and so, I mean, we, we couldn't, it's kind of funny. One time I asked how we think, how they thought we got the tank to KSC and someone said FedEx. I thought now how in the world would FedEx deal with a 320 foot tank? <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Makes sense. Huh? Um, okay. So uh, who, who, uh, who knows what um, the crew vehicle is compared to the launch vehicle? What do they, uh, for, the, for this new launch vehicle, what do we call the crew vehicle? Oh, Ryan, very good. Yep, y'all know that one. Okay, I wanna see someone write this one this time. What do we call the launch vehicle? You know I'm all about the rockets. Artemis, yay. <laughs> okay, so um, if we go to the next chart, the next one after that, I bet you, you all now can point and show me which one the boosters are the solid rocket boosters. You can tell what the big orange thing is, right? You know what's on top of that big orange thing and you know what the engines are. Am I right? Yes. Yay. So, um, um, let's see, what, what have I forgotten here? Oh, uh, on the side, I wrote down some of the methods that you can use to learn or follow um, follow um, Artemis or Orion or anything. But I've found that you guys are better th at this than me. So um, I'm not gonna go into any of those. And let's go to the last chart. And this is my getting off the stage chart, but I hope um, I've um, piqued your curiosity and made you want to become Imagineers. Um, I always like the expression Imagineers. And by the way, Imagineers was not, did, uh, Disney did not come up with the term Imagineer. It was in East Tennessee. Um, a plant, a manufacturing plant called um, Alcoa. And Alcoa, which NASA did use, was an aluminum plant. Remember I said in our, our solid rocket boosters, we use aluminum. It's uh, Alcoa stands for Aluminum um, Corporation of America. And they come up with the term not arconic, now arconic, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, uh, now I'm thrown off here. Um, as far as Alcoa Corporation uh, came up with the term, and I think it's I think it's a cool term. I like to think of us having imagination. 
And my, like I said, my getting off the stage chart is um, I want to really encourage everyone to look at science. It, it, there's a lot, it's hard at times and there's a lot of struggle um, with so, learning some of the concepts and everything, but it can be so rewarding and so exciting. And um, there's always something happening at, uh, that, uh, uh, that you can relate to once you learn about science. Um, and that's, that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Jolene, for your presentation. Um, we are open for some questions now. You can either unmute yourself and ask the question or you can type in the chat. We'll put you a few minutes from that. I'm, I'm guessing they asked their questions as I was going. I have a question for you. We have a lot of middle schoolers on the, on the call tonight. Um, what should they be looking at doing while they're in middle school to prepare for a career as an engineer? I would say, uh, as far as your foundation, uh, just to look at your math and science. And, and there's one thing that, that, that I didn't realize was so important, and that was my labs. Um, there's one thing about analysis, but there's another thing with labs. It's as an engineer, I've learned that test is more important than any type of analysis you can do. Um, if you can test it, because you can sit and you can calculate and you can figure out all kinds of things. And then you go do an experiment and find out something doesn't behave like you thought it was going to do. So get involved in anything from a science and math perspective. Uh, uh, can someone tell me what that last question was? Yes. What should I be doing in high school leading to college to help pick my engineering degree? In my mind, um, don't you mean as far as a specialty in engineering, I'm assuming, like mechanical versus electrical versus, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, remember my first part of my story, I was a structural engineer and it really doesn't matter. There's so much you can get into. If you can just get your basic engineering, even physics degree, you can build off of that and you can go all different kinds of directions. So I would just, if you're an interested in engineering, that's wonderful. I would just start in on the engineering and then I, and, and then from then on, um, I like mechanical, electrical, or uh, even structural. For higher up classes for juniors or seniors, say again. So um, I'm gonna skip to, the, we had a question the same time as Whitney's question. Annalise said, "Do you did you ever imagine you would work at NASA? No, not at all. <laughs> I was, I, like I said, my dream, I had this dream and I was one of those that I was focused, you know, and then when it fell apart, I'm like, what am I going to do? But that's the thing I want to stress is if you have an engineering degree that you, they can't take that away from you, you know, you got it. You can go all kinds of directions. So the next question is, um, for higher up classes for juniors or seniors like AP Calc, AP Physics, do you think it's better to just take them in college to learn the concept without the stress of applications? Um, so th this is totally my opinion. Um, you base everything, a lot of what you do when you're trying to figure things out is based in physics, right? And so whatever way that you have to get the basics, that solid foundation, because once you get in college, you're going to build on that foundation. So I would say get some. I don't necessarily think you need AP in, in, um, in um, high school. I think just where you learn just the basics, because in college, then you can build on it. Does that make sense? 
All right, so then the next question is, um, what academic background and experiences prepare you for the role at NASA? Uh, I'm sorry, say again? What academic background and experiences prepared you for your role at NASA? In engineering classes, physics. Physics help has helped me more ways than one, just understanding physics. You know, I had to take Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, Calc 4, Calc 5, <laughs> and differential equations and all that. And the basic math helps if you're going to get into an analytical field, but physics helped me more than anything. Thank you. Um, the next question is, was it and difficult... Chemistry is good too. Knowing how materials behave, everything's materials. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, it's but fine. I always forget about materials. Understanding how materials behave, as you can imagine, that's so important. Mm -hmm. Chemistry is important. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the next question was: Was it difficult for the crew team and launch team to combine their two projects? <laughs> uh, no, although we tease each other, um, we would tease each other that you that they were just the crew team was just he a hood ornament on our propulsion vehicle. But um, no, we we definitely talk to each other. Okay, so um, do you work more with mechanical or electromagnetic physics? I, when I worked, I um, use basic principles in all the different areas. You, you end up use, utilizing across the board. That's why I'm saying, um, you know, picking a specialty is not so, so such as important as getting your basics down. Okay. Um... Would you ever work for a commercial space slash space ship company? Okay, now I, I saw that question and the answer is maybe. <laughs> uh, oh, my husband worked for what's called commercial crew and he worked for NASA also, but what he did was um, he, he was a manager and he came up with the criteria that the Elon Musk, the Jeff Bezos, those ty type of folks had to um, adhere to, to go in, uh, to put humans on their vehicle. And um, so he interfaced a lot more with commercial crew. Um, so the answer is, I, I might think about it, but I have enjoyed my NASA career, so I <laughs> I hope that answers question. Uh, so then the next question is, did the pressure of the job ever make you want to quit or regret pursuing it? That's one thing. There's always struggles. And yes, there's lots of times, it, you know, I felt more like I wanted to quit a lot of times when I was doing engineering school, though, I'll tell you. Um, when there's there's going to be what job you're in there's going to be days that you think why am i doing this to myself yes but then when you see something launch or when you see that everything goes right by the way um since i work propulsion i used to hold my breath until i about pass out and, and waiting for those uh, boosters uh, i don't know if you remember how the boosters used to fly away at the end and you jettison your boosters and then you jettison your tank, um, you'd always be so thankful that, that what you worked on performed properly. Uh, so the next question is, did you watch the Webb telescope launch in person? I did not. I wish I did not. Well, oh, in the launch, as in, as in the the space shuttle launch, I watched. Uh, I was actually at KSC for all the launches. I I worked on the pad some. If you're talking about the actual launch of the space shuttle, for it. 
But if you're talking about when they launched it in space, then no, I, di I didn't. I didn't watch it. I should have. Okay, so the next question is, how does liability work for the engineers at NASA if anything goes faulty? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'm not sure you mean like if it, for me, for an engineer personally, um, well, I don't really know how to answer that question. <laughs> except um you usually uh get removed from the job um but um there's usually something that you can work on um and um i i don't know what <laughs> let's I'm not quite sure how to answer it because I'm not quite sure what they're asking. Um, okay. If um, Julia, if you want to just elaborate on that question, and then we'll just go on to the others while we while we wait for your follow up. Um, where did you go to college? I went to a small school um, called Ohio Northern University, um, and. Um, as it said, as you could probably guess, it's in Ohio. They had engineering and law and pharmacy were the main things they had in the school. Okay. Uh, what does a typical day or week look like for you as a propulsion engineer at NASA? Okay, for me, I worked with the hardware a lot. Um, so uh, a typical day for me was to look at um, the basic problems, the basic issues, because being an engineer is a, is a big problem solver. So um, I would look at a lot of times if they're having problems building the electrical, they're having pro any problem they're having with the rocket, the building of the rocket or something with the design of the rocket. And then I could actually go out on the floor and the manufacturing floor and look at the physical rocket itself and see what the issue was and um, uh, work with the team or creative on the problem. Uh, someone says go Klondikes. Uh, uh, the polar bears? The, the polar bears? Is that what they mean? Ohio another. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was what they meant. Okay. <laughs> Surprise someone knows what Ohio Northern is. Um, all right. So Julia had a follow-up um explanation. She said, uh, just like if anything goes wrong or astronauts get injured, slash so materials get damaged in a launch, what type of or is there any consequences for the sciences behind it? Uh, yes, there's consequences. Yes, I mean, you, you, besides just you're, you're not wanting to hurt anyone. You're not wanting. That's why you're, you're so careful. That's why I put so much job and double checked everything and made sure everything was right. Um, I didn't want to hurt anyone. Now, if if you really if you screw up, you uh, with the government, they rarely um, they were rarely fired people. But working for contractors, absolutely, you can lose your job. Thank you. So we do have time for about one or two more questions and then we have to call it a night um, and finish up our meeting. So if there's anyone else that would like to ask Ms. Jolene a question, please say it in the chat. Well, I'll just say that I really appreciate all the all the questions and it makes me excited to think that people are interested in, in getting into science and math and everything. And I want to do everything I could to encourage you. 
Oh, um, we do have one last question. Um, Luca asked, what is your favorite part about NASA? The rockets. <laughs> <laughs> I like rockets. And I it, think, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, you I just, I bet he, I bet they guessed that one. <laughs> Well, Ms. Deline, it has been such a pleasure having you um, on the meeting. We are going to end. Uh, we have a few more slides, so if you would like to stay behind and just see how the end of the meeting goes. If not, you can also leave. Um, would you like to stay for the last five minutes? or? I'll, yeah, I'll stay and listen in. I'll just go ahead and put myself on mute. Okay. So, um, Again, everyone, uh, thank you for your questions. Um, Ms. Julian, thank you for your time. I really um, love the interaction with all the students and the questions that you guys asked um, and also engaging with her during her presentation. So I really appreciate you guys being here um, and I hope to see you guys in future meetings. So um, we also have a, so we have what's called Friends of ORNL and um, these are the Friends of the Oak Ridge National Park, it's got park, lab, not park. Um, and so their incentive is to provide students who come to um, our virtual science club um, as a as a gift. Um, so the participants who registered and also participated um, in the meeting, um, I have uh, three names. Now um, I will go through them if the student is not here anymore. Um, but essentially what happens is I look through the roster while we are in meeting um, and see who attended, not only registered, but also attended this meeting. Um, and so what happens is whomever that person is will choose one of the five um, items on the um, on this slide and we actually will send this gift to you and it's okay if you're not from Tennessee um, if you're from any of the states that we mentioned we will ship it over to you um, I don't know if she's on here right now but our treasurer Miss Jennifer um, she sends out she orders it and then sends it directly to your home or PO box whichever um, so what we do ask is after you choose your gift um, that you send your full uh, first, last name, and address, and you can also CC your parent if you would like to, um, so that we can send you this gift to you. All right, so I have Timothy Grant. Are you still here? Hello. Timothy, are you interested in getting one of these um, gifts from us? Yes. All right. So which one of these five are you interested in? Very popular, very popular prize. All right, so um, if you can write down the prep at utk.edu, um, I'll just have you, and I'll write down your email as well so I can send it um, a, an email to you if you don't follow up. Um, but basically, you'll just send me um, your first and last name and the full address and then CC your parent if you decide to do so. Um, that way we can send this over to you. All right, awesome. Um, Okay, so there was a question about um, signing up for the virtual science club and I'm, I'm going to go a little bit more in detail in that in just a second. So we are on um, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, as well as we do have a newsletter. Um, so with our prep prep programs, uh, Virtual Science Club is just one of our five programs. Um, and so we have um, programs for middle school and high school students. Um, and in your email, we, I did send out um, having links to all of our programs. But basically, um, across the board, we try to keep things updated with applications. And with um, any um, event pictures, we, we post it on Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter, and um, our newsletter will let you know when we have um, uh, when we have 
um, our events happening and if there's any application deadlines or updates it's also on our newsletter so um, all these uh, QR codes are available uh, for you to check out, um, but also in our follow up email you'll have links to so you can find us literally anywhere. So if you're interested into joining in us to our next meeting our next meeting is going to be on January 9th um, and so. Like I said, we have two types of meetings we meet with our mentors one week and then we also meet with. Um, with guest speakers like Ms. Jolene. Um, so next time uh, we are skipping the 2nd December just because it's gonna be holiday time. Um, but for the January one, you can sign up here. Uh, we do have a, um, we do have a webpage for our virtual science club that has all the details and every date that we're available. Um, you're just gonna sign up for one of those. Um, Typically what I do also is anyone who has um, previously attended our meetings, I also just send them the link anyways. So if you're not, uh, you forgot to register or whatnot, you at least still have the, um, the link. So if you are part of this meeting or signed up, then you'll get an automatic email from me. Um, the Usually it's like the Wednesday or Thursday before the meeting and then the, the day of just to remind you that hey we have a meeting and if you're interested definitely come by so um and that wraps up my um our meeting for tonight again i'm so thankful for you guys coming through um i hope that you enjoyed your time here miss jolene thank you so so much for coming by kim do you have something you want to say Yes. I do. I wanted just to, to, to announce that uh, that you got a recent very nice promotion and you will oh. be the entire prep program. Congratulations. Yes. yes. So um, I am now the assistant director of pre-college programs and strategic initiatives. Um, I was previously the coordinator um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to move forward. Thank you. Um, and supporting our programs and making them grow and uh, reaching out to as many middle school and high school students that are interested in just working with us and, and being part of our programs. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I'm really happy that our meeting went so well. And again, I hope to see you next time. Um, and just to let you know also, we do have more programs throughout the year, um, but Virtual Science Club is from September to February. So, um, you will have meetings during that time frame, but for our um, middle school, high school students, we do have programs starting in February um, and then March and April. And then if you're in uh, rising junior or senior, uh, we also have our governor school program, which is in the summer. So we, you can definitely pick our brains about those if you're interested um, and yeah, so I hope to see you guys for next meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming by. And I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you. Bye.